you will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all of your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the real test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1 of your booklet. Section 1. You and a friend are looking for a place to live. You have a list of places and go to see a rental agent to check on a number of points. Listen to the conversation between your friend and the rental agent and complete the list. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6 on the housing list. You will see there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, we've been looking over your listing of apartments for rent and we have a few questions about a couple of the apartments. Can you help us? Sure. Yep, yeah, this is our most recent listing. What would you like to know? Well, we were first wondering about the house on 3rd Street. We can see that it is furnished and rents for $135 a week, but can you tell us how many bedrooms it has? Let's see. In addition to the den, it has three bedrooms. The rental on 3rd Street has three bedrooms. So in the example, three bedrooms has been written down in the number of rooms column for 19 3rd Street. Now, we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Hi, we've been looking over your listing of apartments for rent and we have a few questions about a couple of the apartments. Can you help us? Sure. Yep, yeah, this is our most recent listing. What would you like to know? Well, we were first wondering about the house on 3rd Street. We can see that it is furnished and rents for $135 a week, but can you tell us how many bedrooms it has? Let's see. In addition to the den, it has three bedrooms. What about the one on Route 9N? It looks like it's big with a library and a deck, but it doesn't say how much it costs or anything else about it. Oh yes, Mrs Gaylor's apartment. That one is actually only a 10-month rental and it is going for $156 per week. It's quite a nice place. She only rents for 10 months each year because of horse racing season. Then her relatives all come to stay, so tenants have to move out. It's a little bit inconvenient, but past tenants have really enjoyed their stay there. Oh, well, we need it for a full year. I guess that one is out. How about the rental on Broen Drive? How many rooms does that one have? As it says on the list, it has two bedrooms and a private kitchen and bath. But it's actually a very small place. That's why it's a bit cheaper. Oh. Well then, what about the one that has three large rooms? Who is renting that property? That one is a good deal. Mr John Smith is renting it. But he's quite eccentric and he has a strict rule about no pets. How about cats? Nope. Absolutely no pets. Hmm. Well then, how about this studio apartment rented by Mr Bo Jensen? How is that one? That ad is actually a bit deceptive. The studio apartment is the whole upper floor of an older house. It's actually very large and, at $45 a week, quite affordable. And it's near campus. I think I'd like to check that one out. Do you have a telephone number that we can call? It's not on the list. Oh, it isn't. Here it is. You should ring area code 518 and then 543-7790. Thanks. I think I'll call on that one first. Your friend decides that he would like to talk to Mr. Bo Jensen. Look at questions 7 to 9.
Answer questions 7 to 9. Write no more than three words for each answer. Hello? 1512, Route 9. Yes, is this Mr. Jensen? Yes, it is. Can I help you? Yeah, we're studying here at university, and we came across the rental information for the studio apartment that you are renting. Is it still available? Yes, of course. I actually just placed the ad, and you're the first person to call. Is there anything you'd like to know about it? Yes, actually, there is. As students, we are on the internet a lot, and we heard that some homes in the area have high-speed connections. What type of connection do you have there now? Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting first question. But I guess I have heard that too. But we just have a phone line here. Nothing fancy. I think you can have a cable line installed, but it's just a phone line for now. OK. Well, maybe we can do that. What type of heating does the apartment have? Now, there's a more traditional question. We have oil heat here. It's an older house. That tends to be a little more expensive during the winter, right? Yeah, but there's nothing to do about it. It would cost too much for me to put in a gas heater. What else would you like to know about the apartment? Well, we heard it was quite big. Is it furnished? Actually, yes. I should have put that in the ad. It has an old couch and a couple of chairs, a dining table, refrigerator, stove, and even a dishwasher. Does it have any beds? Yep, it has two. That sounds great. When is the apartment available? You can have it tomorrow night if you want. I just have to clean up a couple things before you get here. Do you want to come over and see it first? No, it sounds fine to us. I actually know the street too, so I know the area. We'll take it. This is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, turn to Section 2. Section 2. You will hear a radio advertisement for a health program. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Prevention is better than cure. You all know that, don't you? Have you been looking for some help and guidance for maintaining your health? Well, today, I want to tell you all about a new health program called Be Well. Be Well Online, actually. This is an interactive website packed with resources to assist you in achieving your health goals. On this website, you'll find up-to-date health information you can trust. It has a register which includes a quick online check to assess your health and keep track of your progress. What do you want to do? Lose weight? Give up smoking? Manage your blood glucose levels or just improve your overall fitness? Use the simple online assessment tool and receive a personalized report on your current state of health. This is what we call your wellness register. After you've completed this, you'll be ready to move on. Now, the Active Health Agenda is where our team of experts has created a series of interactive eight-week programs for some of the most common health goals. These are aimed at differing ages and lifestyles and include healthy eating and workout plans, plans for losing weight, stress management, longevity, or how to age gracefully by maintaining your health, and express workouts for those of you who never have enough time. If you join up to Be Well Online, you'll not only be able to use a whole suite of interactive tools and calculators, but you'll also have unlimited access to an extensive library of health articles, delicious, simple recipes, and illustrated exercise descriptions. Let's look first at the active sport component. This gives you individual attention, 
In fact, it's a virtual personal trainer. Sports science and fitness experts have developed programs that will enable you to take on a specific sporting challenge or fitness goal adapted to your particular ambition and skill level. Detailed daily warm-ups and workout plans and weekly training schedules will help you prepare for any upcoming event of your choice. Marathons, triathlons, open water swims, cycling or fun runs are just some of the events you could enter with confidence when you've completed an active sport program. Be Well Online also features an active care project. This caters for individuals who want to address specific health needs. The four courses in most demand are Stop Smoking, which will give you strategies, email support and reliable tools and resources to help you quit smoking forever. Then there is Glucose Management, a self-care program designed for people with high blood sugar, which will help you manage your condition and improve your overall health. Obviously, heart health has a large following. It's basically all about lifestyle modification, where you will take a course of action with the aim of improving your cardiovascular health. Those of you who suffer from neck and or back pain will benefit from the back care program. But we're talking about minor troubles here. Anything major should be attended to by a qualified physician in person. So, what are you waiting for? Register today at BeWellForLife.com. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now, listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Okay, I can hear some of you saying that you don't have enough willpower to go through with our online program. Well, just for people like you, we offer Be Well Coaching. What is it? It's a telephone-based service that will give you the extra support, motivation, and techniques that will provide the impetus for you to bring about permanent changes. Who runs it? The course is delivered by experienced health coaches, as well as qualified exercise physiologists, dietitians, and nurses. Who can use it? Well, this service is really for those of you who have serious health concerns like diabetes, arthritis, or high blood pressure. I know there are many of you out there who could benefit from this. How does it work? Your health coach will provide assistance as you develop a plan and maintain regular contact over a period of six months to help you stay on track. You'll also get access to a phone-in service for extra support if you need it, and you'll be provided with health information specifically targeted at your individual problem. Now, what could be better than that? That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear two friends discussing what to study at Mitchford University. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Hello, Gloria. Hi, Paul. I just heard that you're studying psychology this year. At the moment, that's true. But to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what to study. You're in your third year at university. Do you have any advice for me? Well, it's a difficult question for me to answer, but I do have some ideas based upon my personal experience that may be of help. Anything would be helpful at this point. I'm feeling a little worried about what I should do. Well, there are a few things that I would recommend. Firstly, ask yourself, what do you really enjoy studying? For example, maths, English, science? 
This will help you decide what course you should do. The university handbook lists all the courses available. You should take some time to look at it. A couple of my friends spoke with recent graduates of courses which took up a lot of time. Another thing which took a lot of time was an interview at the Dean of Academic Affairs office. They're always so busy there. Unless you've got a lot of time, I wouldn't bother with either of those ideas. Okay. Gloria, I understand there are some excellent publications that I can look at which will help answer my questions. But the trouble is, I'm having a real hard time locating them. Do you know where I might be able to go? Yes, I encountered this very same problem when I was deciding on what to study. I managed to locate a few excellent books that really helped me to decide what was best for me. Now, some of the details will be a little inaccurate. That's no problem. If you could just remember the titles, I'll be able to look them up at the university library. Now, let me just get my pen.、Uh, okay, ready? All right. The first book I found was What Should I Do? It was written by Paul Smith, and I believe it was published in 2000 by Smith Brothers. I think this was the best book I read, although Judy Newton's Choosing University Courses was also an excellent help for me. Can you remember what year that one was published? Hmm, let me see. Most of the books I read were published around the same year, 2000, I think. I can't remember who published it. I think it was Printers Limited. You'll have to check that one out yourself. No problem. This is just what I've been looking for. Anything else you could recommend? Yes. There was one other book which I remember because my cousin works for the publishers Brown and Tate. He started there in 2002. Anyway, the book's called Surviving University and was written by Julie White. It's an excellent book which came out in 2004. I certainly recommend it. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 28 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 28 to 30. Gloria, this discussion has been so helpful. I wonder if I might ask one more question. Sure. What would you like to know? Well, I'm wondering why you finally decided to study psychology. Well, what helped me to decide was my interest in working with people. I think that's what you've got to really decide in your own mind. Do people give you energy or do they drain you of energy? I asked my friends what they thought of my idea, and most of them thought it was a good choice. Yeah. You know, I think my parents or family members who know me well would be a good place to start. Hmm. I think if you like to research subjects, you might prefer to work by yourself. That could help you to decide what area you should study. For me, I like working with numbers, and I knew psychology involved a lot of this, so that also helped me to choose my course of study. The bottom line is, you've really got to know what you naturally like to do. Once you work that out, you simply choose areas of study that relate to those things. Well. Gloria, I can't thank you enough for your time. Would you be interested in joining me for a coffee? That is the end of section three. You will now have thirty seconds to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four, you will hear a talk given by a lecturer to a group of civil engineering students on the reed bed system for sewage treatment. Before you hear the talk, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-four. Now listen carefully to the first part of the talk, and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-four. Thank you for inviting me to speak to you today about what is now called the reed bed sewage treatment system. This system uses naturally occurring reeds to treat domestic and industrial waste. 
it's an environmentally friendly alternative to normal systems. You all know what reeds are like, don't you? Those tall plants with hollow stems that grow in wet places, like marshes, for example. Here's how the system works. First of all, an artificial marsh is created. To do this, holes are dug about one metre deep and usually rectangular in shape. They are then lined with clay or plastic and the liner is covered with gravel. After that, a system of tubing is laid with holes in it and more gravel is added to cover that. Finally, reeds are planted in the bed. The sewage is brought to settling tanks. From there, it is distributed to the roots of the reeds through the tubing. Note that the waste material enters the beds underground and remains underground. The reeds conduct oxygen very efficiently through their stems to the roots system. Here, bacteria work to reduce the waste material to basic elements. What comes out of the artificial marsh is water that has been cleaned through a natural process. The purified water leaves the reed bed through a simple outflow pipe. The water that comes out has to be tested. Sometimes it's held in a pond until it evaporates or soaks into the ground. Sometimes, after testing, the water is discharged directly into streams and rivers. Before the talk continues, with questions from the students, you have some time to look at questions 35 to 40. Now, as the talk continues, answer questions 35 to 40. The reed bed system originated in Germany in the 1970s and installations have been built in a number of countries throughout the world. To give you an idea of the size and appearance of a reed bed installation, an area of 3 by 5 metres approximately would be adequate for a single house. It would look like a pond overgrown with reeds. There are cities with 150,000 people in Germany whose entire sewage treatment requirements are served by reed bed installations which extend for 10 to 20 hectares. There are two wonderful environmental advantages. First of all, reed bed systems are natural composters. As time passes, high grade soil builds up in the beds. The soil can be removed and used for agricultural purposes. Soil produced from waste containing heavy metals would of course have to be tested and the toxic material removed by chemical processes. An additional advantage is that the reed bed can function exactly as a marsh providing a healthy natural home or habitat for waterfowl and other birds, insects, reptiles and mammals. But there are practical advantages to a reed bed system over existing sewage treatment plants as well. At all levels, the cost is lower than for normal systems. Labour costs are a fraction of the costs of a conventional system. Typically, a large-scale reedbed installation will cost 10% less than a mechanical system. They require little maintenance, and unlike mechanical systems, the efficiency of reedbeds increases over time. But before we go any further, you must have some questions. Maybe this sounds too good to be true. That's exactly what I wanted to ask. If these systems have so many benefits, why aren't they more popular? Why don't we see them everywhere? As I said, the technology is now almost 40 years old. Demonstration projects of all types have been built and monitored and are slowly convincing regulators of the advantages of the system. But you have to understand that regulating authorities are by nature conservative and resist change. Typically, there's a lot of opposition to these systems by manufacturers and by everyone involved in maintaining the conventional systems. Reed bed systems require fewer staff to operate, so there would be a decline in the workforce. Therefore, unions would resist the change as well. What happens to reed beds in winter? Does the efficiency decrease? The above ground part of the plants die back in cold weather, but the roots remain alive and active, and the system continues to work just as effectively in winter. As soon as the weather warms up, new reeds appear and grow quickly. Is there a problem with mosquitoes in these ponds? Well, they're not exactly ponds with standing water. The beds look more like a field covered with long grass. The soil is moist, but not like a swamp, so there would be no more mosquitoes than in any other field. 
Remember, the effluent enters the beds underground and remains underground. OK, let's get into some of the technical details now and I'll answer questions as they come up. That is the end of section four. You will now have half...